Good morning everybody and welcome to dive 409 of the RV, oh, sorry, RV, ROV, so you can tell it's early in the morning, ROV Sebastian. Um, we are at 150 metres depth um, at Ashmore Reef. We were about to start a transit but we just got distracted by this gorgeous moray eel um, who looked like he was having breakfast there. I'm Dr. Karen Miller. I'm from the Australian Institute of Marine Scientists. <laughs> I really do need coffee this morning, don't I? <laughs> it's not getting off to a good start. I'm from the Australian Institute of Marine Science and um, I'm the chief scientist here on board the RV Falcor for this voyage to discover the Australian mesophotic coral ecosystems. Some more. <laughs> oh no, that's going to be in our heads all day now. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the transect now. Beautiful moray eel, though. So on this expedition, our mission is to explore a mesophotic zone of Ashmore Reef. Now Ashmore Reef, we're focusing on that because it is a marine park, but very little is known about the depths. The, the reef deeper than about 30 metres, which is our usual scuba diving depths. And so this is really a voyage of discovery to understand what lives deeper than 30 metres on Ashmore Reef. Our focus is very much on benthic invertebrates, so animals that are living on the sea floor. Um, and so you'll notice that we spend a lot of time looking at corals and things crawling around on the bottom. I'm joined by collaborators from the Western Australian Museum, the University of Western Australia and Univ Curtin University, uh, so that we've got lots of expertise here on board to try and study lots of different components of the benthic ecosystems. What we're doing this morning is running a series of benthic transects. So you'll notice that we'll just be uh, running the ROV at a fairly constant and slow speed along the seafloor. And we're just going to be capturing imagery the whole way along. Uh, later on back in the lab, we'll be able to uh, count and identify to at least a broad level the different benthic organisms that we see. And that'll enable us to look at the relative abundance of different species across the different depths at Ashmore Reef. Once we've finished the transects, we'll start exploring in a little bit more detail uh, particularly focusing in on collecting some key organisms that look like they're particularly special or exciting for the museum to work on. Oh, is that a lobster hiding under that rock? Oops, no, waypoint it and keep going. We're on the transect now. <laughs> uh, no, we don't need a lobster actually. <laughs> So you can hear in the background uh, Dr. Nerida Wilson from the Western Australian Museum who's just joined me now and through the day we will swap in and out of uh, narrating the voyage. I believe most people can't tell us apart because apparently our accents are the same but uh, <laughs> I'll leave you guys to be the judge of that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, could we just uh, yeah grab a point of interest on that one it looks like an amazing little sea star that just ran across the bottom of the screen what we'll do is we do the transects where we see something particularly interesting we'll uh, take a waypoint and that means we can uh, come back to it later and find it and then look at it in more detail we were pretty impressed yesterday we uh, waypointed a, a few you're really tiny mollusks that are, you know, only a couple of centimetres big and we still managed to find them exactly on the seafloor, you know, many hours later. So it's a pretty good system.
For those of you that have uh, been joining us for the previous voyages on this expedition, you will notice today that there's an awful lot more sediment in the water than what we've seen. Um, in part that's because we've changed locations around Ashmore Reef. Where uh, The last few days we were surveying on the southern edge of the reef and now we've moved around to the northern side of the reef. Um, today we're on the northwestern corner. Um, that area is a lot more shelving rather than really steep like the southern side and so I'm guessing that that means that we'll see quite a, little, quite a lot of different species and different sea bottom and probably different environmental conditions altogether. So part of the uh, the matter in the sea column, in the water column, is undoubtedly related to the fact that we're in a different part of the reef. Fortunately, we can still see pretty clearly what's on the bottom, so it's not going to affect our work. Yeah, and this, I mean, this area is a, a big shelving, you know, if you look on the map, you know, it's a huge big shelving area. Yeah, so I'm guessing there's more sediment deposition, and that's probably because there's more sediment in the water as well, whereas around the other side we're getting much higher currents, so it probably just washes all the, the light stuff away. Oh, I meant to look at that as we went down, and then I got distracted it's by the right more eel. So you see the very uh, right side, the middle box, see the these guys? Right side. So the ladies on the far right, 34.5. So that's about normal sea water. We should keep an eye on that when we see some of those shimmers to see if, um, if we see some of those shimmers. We might not see them on this side. It's true. Yeah. So I think, yeah, what was it, above 115? Where we started seeing that huge rise in temperature in the shimmer. Mm, that's right. So I'll keep an eye out and see if it changes. I have some exciting news, Karen. What's your exciting news, Nerida? Well, the very last specimen of the day that we processed that was the sea cucumber. And, well, it was being a difficult specimen, but anyway, um, it just finally put its mouth tentacles out and we could see one of those parasitic snails that occur but it's inside the animals so it's on the, the feeding tentacle so it only is external to the animal when it's feeding and then of course like when it's in a specimen bucket it's inside so we just caught sight of this tiny gastropod right at the very last minute but we're very excited so oh wow yeah first limit of the trip which is exciting for us yeah, but it was a bit, it was a bit lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least that got you through the late, late hours of the night. <laughs> yeah, it was very cool. So do you think it's likely to be as a new species or you really don't know at this stage? Yeah, eulimids are as interesting animals, I guess, because they're parasitic, you kind of anticipate that they might be more sort of host specific because they've got a as a larvae in the water column, they've got to find that host and settle um, and find other mates and obviously being quite specific is one way to maximise that. But um, but we don't know enough about eulimids yet, the species boundaries and phylogeny and how they're related to each other to understand that fully. So hence the interest in, in those little parasitic gastropods, tiny as they are and the, sitting in the big ocean. We want to find them and understand them better so we can answer questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But yes, there was much rejoicing in the lab. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Oh yeah, so one of the sea urchins that we collected yesterday, the one that had the very brightly sort of violet blue coloured bits, is a species that is quite toxic. Um, and so we just suggested that it might be better to not um, be digging our arms around in that or getting anyone to do that so we kept the same water in the bio box and washed it out in the sub on the way down right good job it was a great it was a great idea we don't want to put our arms in here <laughs> 
Uh, I think it's mainly kind of delivered specifically by those spines, but um, why not be a bit safer? <laughs> Mark that point, the cuddle bone. Could be quite interesting to, come back, to come back to. and look yeah. at it. Can we put a point of interest there and call it a cuttle bone? What would you like to be called? A cuttle bone. So we're finding that cuttle bones act a little bit like bones on the bottom of the sea. So there are some animals that specialise on that environment and like anything in the in the sea, if there's any resource going, someone will specialise on it. So um, we did find last year in the Ningaloo Canyon some really interesting limpets and gastropods on cuddle bones. So we're certainly interested to take a look at ones found here as well. It's quite a few logs. So there's another one just down at the bottom of the screen, hiding tucked under that rock. Excuse me, please. Uh, what do you want to call this? Cuttle bone. Cuttle bone. Cuttle. See you. Cuttle. Yeah, yeah cover will be fine. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the internal. It's not really a bone, but it's, it's like a bone. The red light. No, we don't need a red light on. I don't think. It's keeping the plankton happy, though. <laughs> Oh, is that for callus? Oh, ah. oh does, uh, so does he need it on for his camera? Merida, I'm going to leave you in control yes. while I go to the bridge meeting. No worries. See ya. Can we mark that sea star? That is a really interesting one, I think. At least it's going past at this rate and at this distance.
<laughs> we'll cure you yet. <laughs> Transition is just to call it a star. Just call it a star. <laughs> Did we have any visitors when we first came down? They have a little shark variety today. Didn't see much when we came down. The visibility was a bit poor, mm. so uh, I did manage to see the bottom floor about four meters off. Okay, well, well maybe today we'll see Snake Day instead. <laughs> well, we did see that was slightly boring. We don't want to see that. Oh yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw that when I was having breakfast. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just check with my message. Where are we in relation to the midpoint? Is it that? Um, yeah, we're probably we're both quarters away through the transition. Okay. Yeah, look, you see the back of the ship there? Yep. Yeah. The little dog just. Yep. Yeah. So the rest of it. Is that the midpoint? Yeah, cool. Gotcha. Thank you. I don't know yet, sorry.
itself. Some beautiful crinoids at the top of the screen there. Two are sort of have their arms extended feeding and one less so. See, we have our little krill friends back again today. So even at this depth, we see some of those what I call oasis rocks, where you just um, have a, a ton of abundant life on them, even though it's you know a, a bit typically a bit less abundant at this depth, still gets concentrated when good substrate is available for things to live on.
got something stuck in my head. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I'm always jealous of people that can whistle really well. I, can't, I just make little weird sounds. You gotta keep your tongue in the mouth. <laughs> 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 Bridge, you have a new position. Copy that. Those of you who are joining us, this is dive 409 of the Twilight Corals Expedition. It is a crispy 15.8 degrees Celsius uh, where we are at the moment, at least on the bottom that is, the surface is much hotter and much more humid. Well, actually it can't be more humid than water, but it seems about the same maybe. <laughs> southern side um, so expecting to see some differences in the habitat that we see today <laughs> can anyone remind me how many nautilus we've seen so far is it three three <laughs> what it was like on its side i think we've seen two swimming i think it was in three yeah. really oh it was a conversation last night in the lab but we couldn't quite figure it out. Couldn't remember. Too tired. <laughs> Focusing on other things. You know what? The way to do that is to... No, you're alright. You're alright. No, that's, that's the target for end of trying to this is the, uh, this is the, uh, corpus, no, core position. Right, so just go back to the beginning and throw the I target at, I think the 150 meter transects or 100 meter transects? The length? Yeah. I think they're like three. three it's all the nice. Yeah, I'll measure the one below it and then yeah. just go from there. Same depth. Oh, it's 299. Yeah. I, I measured it. Okay. So it's 300. Yeah, and you just benchmark it where the water starts falling, it's, it's kind of a straight line. Okay, in the absence of any feedback, I'm going to say we will take some distance. Oh, I can find out for a little bit. Bridge, Arby. Go ahead. Hey, Jason, could you ask Karen if she'd like to take three Niskins at the midway point? She's on her way down. Thank you. I figured it would work out about right timing wise. <laughs>
trying to draw your name again, man? Huh? Are you trying to draw your name again? <laughs> hey, Jason, control. Yeah, uh, FYI, we're going to be heading southwest once we get to the end of this transect. So is that going to be your final heading? Final heading for now, yes, but yeah, it looks good. Okay, you're going to be alright going southwest, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Roger. Also, I moved your position. I grabbed the wrong dot. Yeah, I'll keep trucking over to that one. Oh, octopus below us. Very neat. Students here because I was distracted by what I think is an urchin. Let's call the galley and see if she's down there and just ask her. I'm assuming she wants them, but I'd hate to take them and find out she wanted to do them. So yeah. I'll adapt or something. We can always sit down and wait and, yeah, but you're right, I think the galley's a good idea. sit down and I can do a loop if you guys are having just to hang. Right. I suspect she's gonna want them because she's taking them every every day. Stuff, so. She hasn't taken them at every transact actually. Oh no? No. Okay, that's, we that's better find I'm out. Checking. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, pull out. I'll look up again. Do the three and then we'll look. Right. 
Thanks. See if I can increase your Dewey White watching from La Jolla, a, an old friend. This is Nera narrating the diet today, so hi Dewey. Oh, 
Welcome to everyone watching around the world too, not just old friends, but new ones too, and anyone who's interested in watching us carry out some of our work here at Ashmore Reef. Today we're working on the northwestern part of the reef in a new location. We've been diving on the southern sites until uh, this morning. So we are seeing a, a slightly different bottom at this depth, um, a fair bit more sediment than we saw at the previous dives. And we'll continue um, to collect data um, by visual imagery on transex, which is what we're carrying out right now, and also in some biodiversity collections later on. So hopefully it'll be an interesting dive today. Can we mark a point of interest here, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, what have we got? Sign a marker again. Yeah, in front of the vehicle, though. Yeah. That's like going to be 10, 50 meters off. Oh, I might stop. Oh, one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Maybe not too long ago because it still looks in pretty good condition. Please keeping an eye on us. So then to a ship is already come here. Diagonally down. Okay, fair enough.
So welcome to everyone. Uh, we're going to do probably today, I think, two transects. We'll be collecting water samples about halfway through the transects. We've already done um, the water collection for this particular transect, and that's to capture water which will then be filtered uh, and sequenced so um, looking for the DNA of animals that have been in near and around and shed things into that water so it's a way to understand biodiversity um, in a different way and so it's one of the tools that are being um, explored and tested uh, across the world looking for ways to monitor the ocean but we're also collecting imagery um, along these transects which will be analyzed after the cruise uh, and of course since I'm Dr. Nerida Wilson from the Western Australian Museum I'll be focusing on things of interest uh, but amazingly with the location um, quit we just leave a, a marker and come back and find them later and so far we've been just astonished with the accuracy that we can come back to exactly that part of the sea floor many hours later and find the, the mark that we left earlier and find that thing that interests us, so uh, it's a really flexible way to be able to do our work. So enjoy as we continue to fly along this transect.
I, I note someone's picked up on my uh, expert um, opinion on vertebrate creatures. So, eely fishy things are definitely the, the strict terminology that I would use. <laughs> Give me an invertebrate any day. <laughs> Thank you. 